Question one, a sequence is generated using x1 equals three, and the equation or the iterative formula is xn plus one equals two xn plus seven. Write down the first four terms. So remember what we said, it means that the next term is derived by taking the previous term, multiplying it by two and adding seven. So if the first term is three to find the second term, we have to two, we have to do two times the previous term and then add seven. Two times three is six plus seven is 13. To find the next term, we have to do two times the previous term, which is now 13, and then we add seven. So two times 13 is 26. Then we have to do 26 plus seven, which is 33. Then the fourth term here is we're doing two times the previous term, add seven. Two times 33 is 66, and then 66 plus seven is 73. Question two, the amount of money, M pounds, made by a small business at the start of year N is MN. The amount of money made by the start of the following year is modeled by MN plus one equals 1 1.9 MN plus 500. At the start of year one, the business made 1,000 pounds. According to the model, how much money would the business be making by the start of year six? So the first year, so the start of year one, they're making 1,000 pounds. At the start of year two, Remember what the formula means, to find the next term, we're doing 1.9 times the, pre the previous term plus 500. So we're doing 1.9 times 1,000 plus 500. So we're doing 1.9 times 1,000. Now remember the quick way to do this, now that we've done the whole topic, in the beginning we just kept doing the substitutions. So we're doing 1,000. Then we do answer, just to confirm, we're doing 1.9 times the answer plus 500, which gives us 2,400. Yeah, so 1.9 times 1,000 plus 500 is 2,400. The third term is to be doing 1.9 times 2,400 plus 500, which for us, we can just, because the answer is now 2,400, we could just press equals. So we got, 50, 60, and for the start of the fourth year, we're doing 1.9 times 50, 60, plus 500, 10, 114, M5, by similar argument. So remember, we're to our money. So we're gonna say 19716.60. Then M6 is 1.9 times that 19716.60 plus 500 and to the nearest pound, yeah, because we want it to the nearest pound, that's approximately 37962 pounds is your solution for that one. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Show that 9x squared minus 5x minus 27 equals zero has a root between two and 2.1. So the first thing we do is we let f of x equal 9x squared minus 5x minus 27 and we need to sub in two, and we need to sub in 2.1, and we are trying to show that there is going to be a change of sign. Right, so subbing in two is minus one, then subbing in 2.1, we can see that is a positive number, 2.19. Now it's very important that we state there is a change in sign, and we need to say f of x is continuous, for x being between 2 and 2.1. Therefore, the root lies between 2 and 2.1. So it's very important you say both change in sign and f of x is continuous. The next part is saying show that the root of 
2.032 is correct to three decimal places. So remember, to show that a root is correct to three decimal places, we need to show that all the numbers that round to this number to three decimal places work in terms of the upper bound and the lower bound. When we sub those in, we need a change in sign. So we're going to do f of the upper bound. Now the upper bound to this number is, we just treat it as 20 at the end, so we make it 25. 2.0325 and then the lower bound instead of 20 it will be 15 so 2.0315 okay so we still got these numbers in the calculator so we're going to go back and change it to 2.0325 so you get a small number but it is positive so we're going to say that is 0 0.0170 dot 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 then we're going to go ahead and go back and change it to 1, 5, which is negative. And that's ideal, that's what you want. So minus 0 0.0145 dot dot dot. So we're going to say change in sign, and you have to say this, and f of x is continuous for, now we're talking about the function being continuous between the upper and lower bound. So between the lower bound, x, and the upper bound, Therefore, we can say 2.032 is correct to three decimal places. And that's our solution to question three. The equation x to the power of 4 minus 5x cubed minus 10 has a root between 5 and 5.1. Show that x to the power of 4 minus 5x cubed minus 10 is 0 can be written in this form. Well, because we can see a fourth root in there, we can immediately see which x value they rearranged for, and that's this one. So these two terms must have gone to the other side to give us 5x cubed plus 10. Then we fourth root both sides to rearrange for x. So this would go, and we're left with x is the fourth root of 5x cubed plus 10, which is shown. Then it says use the iteration formula from the derivation in part a with x naught being 5.07 to find the root correct to 3dp. Now, because they haven't told you how many iterations to do, you need to keep going until you find consecutive x values that give you the same value to 3dp. So I've just written a few x's out. So we're going to do 5.07 equals answer equals then we just type in the formula, so we're doing the fourth root of 10 plus 5, then the answer button to the power of 3. So our first solution to three decimal places is 5.072. Then we go again, we get 5.073, that rounds to two three decimal places. Then we go again which is going to give us 5.074. We need to keep going because they're not the same. And this gives us 5.075. So again, still not the same. So we need to keep going. 5.075. Okay, so this seems to be the solution to three decimal places.